Food We Love with Linda Yu is presented by Arun's Thai Restaurant. Hello, everybody. I'm Linda Yu, and hello to you guys, too. Uh, welcome to another segment of my new video series for the Chicago Sun-Times. We call it Food We Love. Mm -hmm. Here on our Sun-Times studio kitchen today to share a food they love <laughs> is my former ABC7 colleague, sports anchor Jim Rose, and his wife, designer, the beautiful Lakeisha <laughs> Rose. Sweet. And Jay and I did the 4 p.m. news together for mm -hmm. how many years? Uh, uh, let's leave that. Let's leave that. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, I am so thrilled to have him here with Lakeisha, and we're going to talk about a dish that has been very special for at least two generations mm -hmm. in his family as well as in Lakeisha's family. It's yeah. pot roast, mm. and people go, Pot roast, pot roast is so easier. Pot oh. roast can be so yummy, right? Oh, and the way she prepares yeah. it, yeah. it's extremely yummy. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it, there's nothing better to me in our house to cook something that takes three or four hours on mm -hmm. a Sunday, especially yeah. when it's winter. Yes. I mean, it's like the whole house is permeating with whatever you're cooking, and so I love pot roast on Sundays. You guys have this tradition, but it was after you met, mm -hmm. and sometime after, all right, when you started talking about what to cook and what to what to eat together and stuff that you discovered that this pot roast or this kind of pot roast is a tradition that happened as you grew up right. and as you grew up right. on Sundays. Yeah. Well, right. with my family, uh, it's a family of 10, my yeah. mom and dad yeah. and eight brothers and sisters, right. you had to cook a lot of food for a lot of people and pot roast was that ideal sure. dish. And my mother made it with the rudimentary meat and potatoes yes. and carrots and you know spinach and things like that and it was fabulous until I met yeah. her, and then it went from Back here. To no disrespect, <laughs> Mom, to way up here. It's okay, Mom would understand. She would right? understand, she would understand. Yeah. So you grew up with it, mm -hmm. and it was great. Yeah. What about you? Same thing, it started on Sunday. I, we, I would come downstairs and I would smell the meat yeah. and the butter, because mm. she would mm. maybe put right. like a stick of butter and then and put it in the oven for about three or four hours, same thing. You'd have the potatoes and the carrots and all of that. Okay. And so I think with, with, with Jim and I, we sort of, t taken this recipe and made it better and and there's just one little secret that changes uh -huh. everything okay I think, for right. are we going to tell now or we'll tell as we do it the Listen, secret. we can tell the secret now, okay, whatever you like. Okay. Now. It's cognac. <laughs> it's in sure. amber flavor, <laughs> an amber colored cognac mm -hmm. that's really just yeah. so divine. You know, you can cook with wine. Mm -hmm. Everyone cooks with wine in sure. various recipes. But what the, what the cognac does, it takes the flavor and it deepens it. Mm. Mm. That makes the world a difference. And my French style mashed potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. It's really right. just oh, phenomenal. Just doing that lovely. Too. Okay, yeah. all right. So tell me about what this means to you at at you know during football season well it, it originated with uh going to cover the bears especially in november and december yeah. at soldier field and i would remark to lakeisha wow you know it'd be nice to have one of those nice warm stick to your ribs type of meals and we talked about this pot roast and then she said okay i've got something for you yeah. and so after the bears got beat by the packers one <laughs> december uh, sunday i came home and i saw this beautiful spread and I forgot all about that game. <laughs> yeah. All of the things about home mm -hmm. mean so much to you mm. beyond food, too. Exactly. Right? For both of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a sense of feel when you come into the house. You know, whether I have flowers or diffusers or candles or how we eat, I yeah. just like our home to feel special. So we had this for dinner last last night, which yeah. we had to taste. Because you had to, to make taste sure. it. Okay. We had to make sure. Okay, so um, this is, you typically want to get about a four to five pound pot roast. Mm -hmm. And for two people, you know, you literally can have another five or six meals out of it. So you, you want can't leftovers. Right, you which I do make this take into work. Small portions. Mm -hmm. So here's you one. shared with me at work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll That's share now. Simple. Right. <laughs> So one thing I do with, with this beef is if you have time, if you have a day before or maybe three or four hours before, mm -hmm. I salt and pepper it. Why? Okay. Because it, it sort of immediately, exactly, intensifies okay. flavors, immediately kind of dry ages it. So mm -hmm. it makes the flavor better in the long run. Okay. So I'll do that. So you can kind of see this has been salt and peppering since about mm -hmm. last night. And so before you put this in a pot, you want to add a little bit of flour, sort of coat the flour okay. on that. And what that does, it kind of builds a crust sure. onto the beef and then later on it's also going to add, be a thickening agent mm -hmm. to the pot right, roast. Right, to your pot roast. Exactly. That was, so we're going to say Magic of TV, it's okay. going to go into a pot, it has some of the flour over it. Okay. So next what you want to do, 
I chop up the onions and the leeks and the carrots. No need to be fancy because mm -hmm. a lot of it, you want to maybe cut it about an inch and a half thick because you don't want it too thick. And the nice thing about this is there, you don't have to be consistent or accurate. It's pot roast because at the end, we're going to take a few cups out of it, blend it, put it back in. Yeah. And it's going to be nice to have those nice chunks of You want the chunks. Meat. And what I love about this is it's the color too. It has exactly. all this mm. color. I exactly. love that about food is having a balance of color on your plate. At, no, that's very, very true. You don't want things Thanks. too beige. You want Thanks. a little bit of red. Yeah, I know you can cook. It's going to be no, great. But coming from you, okay. Uh, well, yeah, just the, the sort of the texture with uh -huh. it. The minute you start seeing the onions and the leeks become a little bit translucent, uh -huh. then after that I add in the red wine and then I add in the gift, the okay. cognac. All right, let's make sure we all see it. Okay, there's the, and then. Oh, yeah. 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 It's delicious. Mm. Yeah. Get that to boil because mm -hmm. what you, you're you trying to do. You want the alcohol to burn off. Right? You want the alcohol to burn off. And then your next step is your chicken stock. Mm -hmm. Here's the beauty of Chicago: is you don't have to make your own chicken stock mm -hmm. anymore. You can go to any butcher shop, sure. um, and they already have chicken stock made. Because I used to actually make my own chicken stock mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until the butcher shops butcher shop started, started doing it. It's okay. fantastic. Okay. Another intensifying of flavor is this bouillon cube. You can get okay, them so in. Make sure we can see it. Okay. So Yes. You can get that either in the cube form where it's a little bit dry, or right. you can get it in this form which has some liquidity to it. Oh. That also brings a little deepening okay. intensifying right. of the but you don't, flavor. If you use a cube, you don't want the whole cube, do you, or just part? No, you can use you just can the, use the whole, whole cube thing. because one cube typically yeah. um, equals to about one teaspoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so All you right. want to put one teaspoon added okay. to the chicken stock. Okay, and that just adds the body to it. Okay. Exactly. Great. Okay. So once that's cooking, then you want to add the tomatoes. Now here's one tip I'll give you. I wouldn't get the chopped T tomatoes because it, it, whatever manufacturing, it's a lot of handling, a lot of hand holding. Get the whole peeled ones, dump them in there, take your 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 tongs, right. just kind of rip them up. Chopping them just up. Just kind of right. chop them up a okay. little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And so once that's done, it's all boiling, getting to the getting to the consistency. Now that you have removed your your piece of roast that's sort of been sitting and resting the whole time, yeah. you want to put that back in there. It has this gorgeous crust on it. Mm -hmm. It's settled and put all the juices in there from the bottom too because sure. all that has the intensity of the flavor. Yes. You put that in the oven for about, on 350 degrees, you cook it for about an hour and a half. Then you bring it down about okay. 250 uh -huh. mm. and cook it for about another hour to hour and a half. And by now the house smells wonderful. Yeah. The house is permeating, <laughs> okay. permeating, it's beautiful. Right. And I come home and that smell is there and it's uh, fabulous. Yeah, okay, so, all right, so that's it. And while the pot roast is in the oven, then what? That's when my French style mashed potatoes happen. Okay. So while that's happening, when you turn it down to 250, everything is about timing when you're in the kitchen yes. and you're cooking. Right. So when you turn it down to about 250 and you have about an hour left, this is when you start this on. But okay. here's another tip about mashed potatoes. I don't boil, I don't boil my mashed potatoes. I don't boil them in water. Mm -hmm. What I have here, this is a strainer. Right. So you just want to put the water right until here. Right. Um, and so what that does, you create steam. So when you decide, when you put in your milk and your butter and your cream for your mashed potatoes, mm. your potatoes aren't absorbed, aren't, aren't filled with water. They're waiting for the milk mm. and the cream and the mashed potatoes. So they will absorb Again, that. they're richer. They're richer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So I just put them in, put in a steamer. When they're done, you sort of prick them with a knife. So whole potato, right? Whole potato. Like this, whole potato. I would recommend Yukon Gold uh -huh. um, because they have a thin, yeah, yeah, a thin skin, yeah. and they're very easy to peel once you've steamed that. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Okay. So after. All right. So exactly. Then what do you do? You take. So here is the fun part uh -huh. of this here. Now here is a French food mill. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with a French food mill? Well, I use it for potatoes. You can make cauliflower mash. You can make baby food. It's really a great way to really mm. aerate your your food and whatever you're putting in there. It's phenomenal for mashed potatoes. I can't even stress it enough. Okay. And then all you do is you just push oh. it through this grate. Oh. And as you see, right. let's get a. What From it's an engineering doing, standpoint, that's pretty cool. I know. It's aerating the right. potato. So I'll show you again just for a effect, and then we will actually use this mm -hmm. potato as a when we plate. Sometimes it's nice to have a towel underneath. Sure, so it doesn't slide around. So it doesn't slide around. Exactly. So now that's it is cool. time to plate up the roast. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that's going okay. over here. So you want me to hold that for you? Uh, 
Um, I the plate? Think, I think I got it. Here, let me hold oh, the plate. Oh, okay, great. There you go. Thank there you. There we go. Okay, so now, this is what you have left. You can maybe put mm -hmm. this over right here. here. Oh, it smells so good. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Oh, just delicious. So I have this sort of consistency here. I've taken out a couple ladles of, um, of, the, vegetables, of the vegetable right? pot mm -hmm. roast, of the vegetable roast, and then I put them in a blender just to puree it, just until okay. you don't see any vegetables sure. anymore. Sure. Let, let me put the lid on, or it's yeah, gonna go, it's gonna go all over the place. Right? Okay. So ready? Uh huh. Do we need to hold this down? I guess. Great. Good. And that's all, right? That's, that's it. it goes fast. That's it. Okay. So now we're gonna balance everything out, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna take this from you guys. Okay. And I'm going to pour it back into the mixture. Mm -hmm. I'll just put that we are going here. to take a little bit of butter. Mo' yeah. bit of butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Where'd that come from? <laughs> or, okay. from my sports days, or still, straight butter, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Once that's blended, you let that cook for maybe like another minute, two minutes, not long. Okay. Now it's time to slice the roast. Okay. We're going to slice it. Mm. against the grain there. And I'm gonna put this back in the pot. Ooh. It's gonna be time to plate up here. Unless JR eats it first. Unless he eats it first, right. <laughs> I'm gonna put this back in. These are a little bit larger chunks than you would serve at home, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit of juice on the end here. Do you need the spoon for that? Now I got the ladle. Okay. This okay. works out perfectly. There's another piece. Oh yes. <laughs> this makes me Lakeisha's happy. Lakeisha's not going to let me hang around. No, we would love to have you. And here you are. Here is your Sunday hot roast. Mm. So thanks for joining us today. We think it's just been wonderful. We hope you will continue to join us mm -hmm. for other episodes yeah. here of Food We Love. Go to chicagosuntimes.com. <laughs> For this yummy recipe and so much more, go to the Chicago Sun-Times website. The address is right here on your screen. 